All right, so attempting to machine a more permanent, sturdy bracket to mount the head to Rex's spine. Used the rough measurements of what I bent out the other day and kind of adapted. And then using some eighth inch thick aluminum flat bar, attempted to make this new bracket, which was going really well, except for the fact that I had punched out for the conduit for the uh, for the compression connector prior to bending the bracket so when I heated and bent the bracket it just bent right at the weakest point so should have expected that should have seen that coming I think I'll go ahead didn't take very long to machine this part I think what I'll do is actually sh take you through the whole process this time without screwing it up Okay, step one in remachining this is I'm going to go ahead and zip off along this line that I had left as the top mark. We're going to make that the new bottom mark. I'm just bending this by hand back to something that looks vaguely flat so that I can get my jigsaw with metal cutting blades in there. I need both hands. And you can see that that metal fatigued right away between the heat from the earlier bend and just trying to rebend it back. That little eighth inch aluminum didn't cut it. Don't have a bandsaw yet. It's supposed to be delivered today. You'd think I could wait. I can't wait. All right, so I used the GP Digital Caliper to dial in a center line. Now we're going to go ahead and scribe in marks for the amount of space that I want to leave for from the front end of the plate to where my horns for the stepper motor are going to attach. They're going to attach in this space here. That's a little better, huh? Okay, they're gonna attach in this space here. We're gonna cut this rectangular area out completely for the stepper motor. There's gonna be a space here then for the horns on what is towards the, the tail side of the head. And then I need to leave a little bit more room here for the bend. So I think what I'm gonna do this time in the initial setup, I went ahead and punched this hole first. This hole is gonna be the last thing I punch. So I'm gonna go ahead, lay these scribe lines out, go through, cut out this opening, bend the plate. Um, I wanna bend the plate after I've cut the opening so that I can go ahead and use the jigsaw. It's gonna make my life a lot faster. Then I'll go ahead and punch out for the half inch conduit coupling. Okay, so I got my line scribed. Got a center line. This is going to be where I plan the top cut to go. Once I've got this bent is when I'm going to go ahead and mark for the conduit fitting. So working from what would be the nose end of Rex backwards. This 15 millimeters is being left strictly to manipulate to get the horns screwed down once we drill and tap for that. Um, I'll clean up this front edge, make that pretty. I'm going to cut this hole which is 22 millimeters by 40 millimeters which gives enough room for the stepper motor to just drop right down in. I then have 10 millimeters worth of space that I am using for horn attachment on the back side and then I've given myself a five millimeter gap uh, where I am allowing the bend to occur. So what's going to happen is I'm going to line the bottom side of this second line, this line that's five millimeters beyond my horn spacing. I'm going to line that up with the vise, heat this, bend it. Once that's done, then I'll actually decide on what this final height needs to be. Right now the overall 
length of the piece here is 100 millimeters. It may need, be, may need to be a little bit longer. The first time I did it, I cut it at 95 or sized it at 95 and it didn't work. So we'll see how this goes from here. So I'm going to go ahead, cut this out, and then get this bend done, and we'll see how that looks. Basically freehanding the starter holes for where the jigsaw will go in. Uh, just thrown a centering bit in the drill press. I have the piece of stock clamped down to a piece of half-inch MDF, just enough for me to be able to freehand and pilot these holes in. So as you can see, I've got the holes drilled out so that I can go ahead and just use the jigsaw to zip this off. I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then we'll set up to make the bend. I'm going to try and record a couple of these cuts here. We'll see how that goes. I may have to put the camera down. Look at that. Totally burnt the teeth right off of it. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Come on. You see that? Burnt the teeth right off of it. I'm gonna go ahead and change the blade. Once again, we'll see if this cuts a little bit better now that it's got some teeth on it. like butter. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and take my scribe, when I find it, and I'm just gonna go ahead and scribe a line about five millimeters above the size of this, above the outside edge of this hole and go ahead and zip it off with the jigsaw. Okay, so now we go ahead, we've got our head mount a little bit more firmly established. You can see pretty substantial difference in the, the length that we're, we had. Uh, with the original kind of template one. Part of that is because I've made the choice to go ahead and mount the servo lengthwise. And I did this uh, in this next iteration because I didn't like the fact that in this orientation, either the head was off center or the bracket was significant and would have to be significantly off center. In this case, what we have with making no further modifications to the linear actuators or any of that other stuff, we have the ability to get Rex's head attached. And while it's not screwed down yet, now the head will track in alignment with the body. So my next move is gonna to be to go ahead, mark and tap some holes on the horn to go ahead and screw the horn down. So we're going to mark and tap holes on the plate to attach the horns of the servo. And just like that, we've got the servo mounted again. We've got the neck attachment figured out. Our linear actuators are back in. We can move on to figuring out a more permanent top plate. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, this jaw is glued in place. Uh, I don't know how soon my 3D prints are gonna come back. There's been some trouble with getting those done. But what I think I may end up doing here, let's see if we can get that to focus, is I may come in here and just razor knife this apart and continue to use this jaw as our sort of mock-up for testing and whatnot, and when we get the new jaws in, see if that might serve as a better permanent skull for, for Rex. So we, we will see how that goes, but got the motor hook back up, 
need to do some temporary electronics again to, to get things fired up and, and get Rex firing. Next step is going to be going ahead and figuring out what the hip section will look like because I want to mount the Arduino and all of the electronics um, componentry down here at the hips. We're going to go ahead and wire everything that we need down the spine, as I had mentioned before, and then go ahead and, and go from there. So, so that's it for now. New, new mount machined and ready for testing. Needs to get tightened up, of course, and the motor needs to get indexed and things like that. But we should be in a good place to, to move forward with Rex having a, a real nice stable skull. And the most we may do here is change some, some of the angles on our linear actuators. I don't know yet. We'll see how that goes. Again, I don't need Rex to have a, a terribly long range of motion right now. As you can see, she's got a pretty pretty sturdy range of motion. I think what I want to do is make that a little bit more biological, a little more organic, and work it down to, to maybe about 135, maybe 150 degrees of arc, something like that. So we'll see what happens with that. All right. Cheers.